Hello, I welcome Corbinian Kramer here with me. You are the head of the test lab at the Fraunhofer ISE here in Freiburg. And uh, on this conference it's very evident that we talk a lot about standards and certification in our sector. What makes this such an important topic? Well, overall standardizations try to get transparency into the market. So on the one hand side there can be standards on products and on the other hand side there can be standards on methodology, how to test and characterize products and actually when we are talking about transparency this is a more important uh, version of standards so the idea is always to make objective characteristics which make it possible to compare different products on different items like quality, function and performance of course. So Europe is as a whole, you know, uni united sort of economically. Um, do you have for common standards in Europe already? We do have. Um, there is a set of standards. I don't want to mention all the detailed numbers, but um, we do have uh, such standards. But also we need to adopt standards. So it's um, an ongoing process to keep track with recent developments, with innovations and things like that. Also some political frameworks are changing. So from time to time we have to revise the standards and uh, to, to solve it. Yeah. Well we speak about a lot of new generation of collectors like I think PVT hybrid collectors which can do both solar thermal and photovoltaics as well as medium temperature collectors. Um, so how do you deal with them in the new standards? Okay. Um, in the end, it has to be differentiated on the details of all these different technologies. But we try to uh, implement new technologies into the existing standard set. So, meaning we widen the scope of those standards. And then, um, it's depending on if there is a need for new equations, for example, or if the equations existing can be adopted to new technologies. Uh, that's different uh, for different technology developments, variants. Um, recently, for example, like solar air heating collectors, where you have quite a different approach to characterize them, uh, it was a big step to implement them in, into new standards or into uh, a new version of a standard or revision of a standard. Actually, for the end consumer, the issue, the main issue they are interested in is whether they get subsidies. So how long is it still ahead for them to say they are key mark adapted, so maybe some national funding programs will also apply to them? Okay, uh, as I said, we are in a continuous process uh, of revising the standards and one important uh, milestone was just achieved uh, a few days ago actually uh, by the final vote on the last revision of uh, the methodology standard. It will be called EN ISO 9806 and this is a very important step because it uh, included some of these new developed products as you mentioned before. So this will be the basis for this process of coming to the point where subsidy uh, can be um, yeah, given to products on an objective basis, decision basis. So uh, there's a, it's a chain of different things which have to be ready to have a subsidy in the end. So the, the standard is the basis on the, on the one hand side and then now we need certification based on that and then also in Germany at least we need uh, also a clear uh, methodology in the, in the subsidy scheme. And then we are ready, so... Uh, One or two years or six months? Uh, no, um, as, the, as the standard is almost available, I, I estimate that we will see a solar key mark certification based on the new standard in uh, spring next year. And uh, hopefully we are almost in parallel ready for the market incentive program revision. Um, so if everything goes well, we will be ready in the mid or in the spring of uh, 2014. EN ISO, that what you mentioned, seems like an international, that means also outside Europe, applying uh, methodology. Um, how is this process going on? Yes, you're right. Um, it, it's from the title you can read that it's a global standard uh, based and, um, okay, uh, structured by uh, the EN committee for this product type. That's why the EN is in front. So um, in the end uh, the idea is 
that uh, methodology wise uh, we can agree on a common standard of how to describe uh, collector efficiencies, performance. Um, I mean, these are equations which are literally valid all over the world. And then the national or regional adoption, which is of course needed from the point of requirements to yeah, the local conditions. This is set up in a different uh, uh, protocol. Let's say it could be a standard, it could also be a certification scheme or others are thinkable, um, but the methodology of how to characterize it, this is globally available in this new standard, so it's also a big step. So to translate this into normal words could mean that you have now um, agreed on a document which says if I want to have a snowball test, you know, like the glass doesn't break, it's not relevant in Austra Australia, but you define it into this methodology and Australia will choose it. And uh, you have other examples on what is fixed in this standard which then applies to certain countries or might not apply to others? Mm. Yes. There's, um, one has to de differ between, a little bit differentiate b between tests which have a pass-fail criteria and tests which have a quantitative result. And then you can decide as a country, as a region, you can decide what minimum limit, for example, you want to set for a requirement on a special test result. An example could be um, that for the mechanical load testing you have a described methodology and you test for example until the breakage of the product so you know exactly the limit. You give this in a test report according to the standard and then everybody can decide if this limit is well enough for the market conditions or, or not. <laughs> okay. Well, how many countries, I mean, the big players in the world today are Brazil or India, China. Are they on the table if you discuss these kind of methodologies? Partly yes, partly no. I mean, it's um, developed on the ISO level in a joint working group, in this case under the Vienna Agreement with the SEN working group. And so basically it's open to all of these countries and some countries, especially like China, they have delegates who join these meetings. India, as you mentioned it, unfortunately has no delegate right now. And also we are missing other countries where we think it would be very nice to have them in. We cannot force anybody to join forces uh, on these issues, but I think as, as markets are growing and the importance is growing, I guess that we will have people from these countries. So thank you for updating us on these important steps for the international market. Of course, thank you.